How did we take this one space and turn it into all these different scenes? In this video, we've created different lighting setups and we're gonna show you exactly how you can recreate them too. We're gonna to light all those different scenes with Amaran products who are the sponsor of today's video. We've got a bunch of their different lights, some of their newer stuff. We'll show you how we do the whole thing. So this shot, we are doing a corporate style interview. A lot of you have probably done these kinds of things before. Essentially, the big challenge with this is we're shooting in front of two big windows which provide a huge amount of natural light. If we just sit down like right here, the light's on right now. Janice, if you mind turning that off, you can see the, the big problem that backlighting causes. We want to expose so we can see out the windows, which you can do with S-Log3 to a degree, but I'm still not going to be lit properly. So as soon as we add that on here, we can get a proper exposure for me and still see everything in the background. All the lights that we're using today can be powered by AC, plug them in, but you can also use V-mount batteries as well. We actually utilize uh, lights with V-mount batteries when we're shooting at weddings quite frequently. It's funny, like if you look at the chair, it really doesn't, like if you look on the director's mono, like it really doesn't look, it still looks like it's a little bit underexposed, but then as soon as I sit down, it actually does a lot. One of the other benefits with using all Amaran products is you can download the Cytus Link app and you can literally sync up all of the lights. You can have everything turn on, everything turn off just with a couple of taps. You can adjust everything individually. Pretty simple to do. You open the app, you're just gonna click on add new fixture. It's gonna search, it's actually already found it right there. Um, this is the F22C, so it's found this one. Um, so we can tap on that and then click set up. And I should now have full control over that light. So if we tap on that. So we're at 31% right now, let's crank it, there you go. It's almost immediate in terms of response too. So that's off. We're at 33%, all the way up to 7,500, all the way down to 2,500. We are at 5,500, so we put it right back to that. And change the color obviously as well, it's full RGB. Really convenient to use that app. In this video, we've created different lighting setups and we're gonna show you how to recreate them too. So for this scene, You've already seen what it looks like when we film it. Uh, essentially, we have the F22C here at 33%, 5400 Kelvin. We've got it on a C stand, just really low down here. This, we're all really liking this light just because how convenient and small it is and light. You can just move it around. It's so powerful yet convenient. Then at the back here, Zach is manning the 300C, the Amaran 300C, with the Spotlight Mini SE on here. You can control the beam on this, and we're gonna play about with this a little bit more later on. You can put gobos in here. We're gonna recreate like a sunset coming in and put it on the window there, so you can do things like that. It's kinda of like to emulate the light coming in from the window here, just to backlight me and get my, like a hair light essentially. Just got that on a C stand as well, and um, then we just exposed to make sure that everything in the background was viewable, and. That was it, very simple. How did we take this one space and turn it into all these different scenes? Okay, perfect. So this scene we've got going on right here is very much inspired by Drive to Survive from Netflix. When they're doing the one-on-one -on -one interviews with the drivers, it's very moody. It's essentially lit with one light. We're using the Amaran F22C here. This is actually set to 99% right now. It's about, I don't know, three and a half, four feet away from me. It's not directly on me. It's just kind of facing away from me. So we're just getting that subtle light on the side of my face. And then the kicker in the background here, we've got the Amaran PT4C. What's it set to right now, Janish? Yeah, it's uh, 56 Kelvin at 4%. 56, 4%. And that's essentially how we did this setup. The important aspect of this is the backdrop here. This is actually a sound blanket or a moving blanket. You can get them for like $20 from Amazon. This is covered in dog hair. It's all ratty, it's all torn in spots. There's actually a pattern on here as well. But when you're in this scene right here, you can't see any of that. So this was a huge part in making the back black, essentially, because under here, it's, well, you saw earlier, it's the, the scene. So this did a huge amount with the light here to get this drive to survive inspired scene. So for this scene, we're now gonna be going into doing a uh, sitting on the couch mimicking golden hour. We're gonna be using the couch right here. We're gonna use some practicals. So we're gonna put a lamp there. That lamp won't provide us with enough light. We're probably gonna use one of four foot P24Cs from the production kit that Amaran sent through. And then we're also gonna be using the spotlight with a 300C here to get the light coming in from the window, but we're gonna really warm it up and then use a gobo to put an effect on the white wall there, which will basically mimic the blinds at sunset. I like that way better with everything going on in the background. Gobos, 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 gobos. So these are gobos. So essentially you get this little thing right here, which slots into the spotlight. And then inside this, you can put one of these. 
These are the ones that came with the kit of the Spotlight. Each one of these has a pattern on it. These are made of metal. What's the best way to describe this? Um, transmits light through. It's what? Yeah, that's a great way. Yeah. The best way to describe this is it's kind of like shadow puppets. You're shining light through this and it's projecting that image onto wherever you point it. So in our case, we're looking for the blind. This one. Important thing for this will be to really warm up the light, not daylight, not 5600. Really warm it up so we can make it mimic sunset. If we shine this at the wall, if you move these in, you see what it does to the light there? You can really shape the light to get the exact image you want. You can kind of see the lines, but that's because it's not in focus. Now if we loosen this, you see as I bring this out, it's going to focus. You probably don't want it sharp like that. You probably want a little bit of a blur on there. Like that. Blind reflection. And then the important part here, we've got to warm this up. and sunset. This won't be in frame. This will be in frame, this won't. So maybe we'll pull this back a little bit. This is the window. So there'll be, I think maybe we do need to use this. You got the easy job today. <laughs> got our practical lamp here. I'm gonna be sitting on the couch right here. We've already got kind of the sunset coming in with the gobo. We're gonna now use this to motivate this. So we're gonna load up the Sidus Link app. I could just get up and do this myself, but a lot of this can be very easily used by solo creators. So if you want to just sit down and look at your director's monitor as you're changing things, which is what I'm going to do, you can very much do so. So if you're ever not sure which light you're going to be controlling, you can just tap on the symbol and it'll flash. I guess on the wall is probably best to really warm up the whole show. Yeah, like that. Yeah, there you go. In this video, we've created different lighting setups and we're showing you how you can recreate them too. So for this shot, we've gone for originally me watching TV, but we opted to me working on a laptop at sunset kind of at home. Very, very warm, obviously. The F22C here is my main key light. We've got the fusion on it. We've got the grid on it. That is pointing directly at me. The big seller for this is this right here. This is uh, achieved with the Spotlight Mini SE, with the gobos that we showed you earlier. The gobo specifically for creating that blind effect. Now, I don't have that fully in focus. I have it slightly blurred. If it was in focus, it really wouldn't sell the effect as much. We've also got a couple of tubes going on. Now, this one is just giving me some light coming in a little bit lower than the F22C. And then the one at the back here is behind the couch. The practical lamp here is, uh, that's our motivation for that. And that is this whole scene. So for this shot, we, are, we don't really have an idea of what the purpose of the shot is, but more so the look that we wanna go for. We're just gonna try and mimic some cove lighting. So it's where we use a lot of diffusion and then we just attack it with lights and it very naturally wraps the light around us and hopefully around my face as well. We're gonna be setting up the the fusion to kind of wrap around this way so it'll be lighting me from this side so we're going to be shooting from the shadow the dark side of my face so this side yep that's that's it right there beautiful there's two ways we could light this we could light behind and diffuse through this what i actually think what we're going to be doing is shining the lights directly into this and then that's what wraps the light around okay that's the tip i read online somewhere years ago and I've never forgotten is that whenever you're putting light stands up, you always do the top bit first because when you first start, you had yeah, on, yeah, exactly, you put yeah. this one up here and then you're like, now you can't reach the top one. So you always do the top bit first, put that to the top and then you can control this more. Like if I look directly onto the camera, you can kind of see it a little bit better. Like it's, you don't have like the Rembrandt look. Like this side's definitely lit more than this side, but this side's still lit. It's just like that. So, yeah, it's like more of a roll off. Let's try adding that negative fill back in this side and then yeah. I think we're good to shoot. Oh yeah, that does a lot then. In this video, we've created different lighting setups and we're gonna show you how you can recreate them too. All right, I think that's it. For this shot, we've kind of gone with the cove lighting. It somewhat worked because we're running out of time in the space that we've rented here. Uh, we would like to darken this a little bit more, but we really weren't able to. So what we've done here to really help um, is add the negative fill here, which Janish is holding. So with the negative fill, when you remove it and then you add it back in, it just adds a little bit more shadow to my face there. So that really helped. The Amaran F22X pointed up onto the unbleached muslin, which we've got wrapped around us there. And then the Amaran 300C, just with the reflector on it, just pointing up on that as well. And that's what gives us this kind of softer wraparound uh, lighting there. You can't really see any point in which the lighting suddenly gets darker. It's just more of a gradual wrap around my face, which is generally what you get when you 
try and do something like cove lighting. Thank you, Amaran, for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in any of the lights, anything we talked about in this video, the links for everything will be down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.